This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. What happened when? WHW Monday. And now, let's go to the ring. And here's your co-host, Hey Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. <laughs> hey Hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? How are you doing? Man, better than I deserve. Happier yeah. than a puppy with two Peters. It's a great day here for WHW because guess what? I know the answer to that, but you can go ahead and say it. Our cock is back in action. How about that? You know, it's so good to be back. World Championship Wrestling from 1986 is back on the Peacock Network. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in business. And what a show we had last week. A lot to unpack here before we get started. We did something uh, kind of special last week. We put David Crockett back in front of wrestling fans, you and him watching the Great American Bash. We've had such a great time revisiting 1986. And of course, you guys were a tag team back then. And to have you guys just reminisce about the good old days on a pretty historic Jim Crockett promotion show, the great American bash where dusty Rhodes became world champion in Greensboro, the home of Starcade. What a cool moment. What a cool show, but that wasn't it during that episode. You said, you know, David, we'd love to have you come down to AEW. I want to go ahead and formally invite you to the bajangles center. <laughs> come on down to the bajangles. Check out AEW and later that night, ta-da, he did. And, uh, that's not the whole story, right? Tom, he was, uh, I had told David during the day, first of all, David came during, during the afternoon and he was there holding court for a lot of the young wrestlers. You know, they all, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them came up to him and said, hello. And I heard him talking about Johnny Weaver and, and I heard him talk about Johnny Valentine and. So he was, and David's always in a great mood. And so I told David, I said, have you met Tony Khan? He said, no, I haven't. I said, well, I'm going to make sure you say hello to him. He said, okay, well, things got busy and I didn't get to do that. But as, uh, Paul white and I go out and do elevation, all of a sudden, Tony Khan, who had walked out earlier, like he usually does came back out. He said, listen, uh, I've got an idea here. He said, uh, David Crockett is back here with us. And how would you guys like to hear him do commentary? And the fans pop yay. And. So he introduced David, David walked out on the stage, came right over and did commentary with, uh, with me and Paul white and Eddie Kingston. And it was a, it was a very, very special moment. Tony had seen him backstage and Tony, as everybody knows, is a, just a great kid. He said, Hey, I'm so glad you were, you came and would you like to do some commentary? And David said, sure. So there it was, and David Crockett, uh, lended his, uh, voice to. Uh, matches he didn't know, but he still talked and still did some of these David Crockettisms, and it was, it was a very, very special night on many levels, but especially since David was there. Look at him, Tony. Look that's at what, him. That's what he said. Put him like a dog. Watch this. Oh, stuff like that. Yeah, it's great stuff, man. He is one of the legitimately nicest guys in wrestling, and I got to tell you, man, I'm really hopeful that, and I'm not trying to jinx it. But once upon a time, you thought you were done with wrestling forever too. Yep. And you wandered back in and you're having a great time and people are so happy that you're back around. And I'm not saying at this stage of his life, David actively wants to be a part of wrestling on a regular basis, but right. my goodness, man, between WHW and then having the opportunity for him to call some stuff for AEW, Sure. I hope that becomes a more regular thing. Not every week. I understand he probably doesn't want to travel and do all the shenanigans, but man, if there were an opportunity here and there for him to just pop back up like that, it, it seems like he's having a blast and boy, are we loving him doing it? Yeah. I agree with everything you just said. He is having a blast. We are loving it. Uh, he brings back the emotions and the feelings of when we were younger. And, uh, so I understand. I understand the feelings that you get when you hear David Crockett's voice. Cause I know the feelings I get when I hear it and a very special time, great show in Charlotte. Uh, we, uh, sold out the, uh, the old Charlotte Coliseum. And by the way, another, uh, side note to that event, I am, uh, doing, I think it's, I think I'm still doing elevation. It may have been right before I started doing, um, 
AEW's Dynamite, I got a text from somebody else. And that text said, look to your right. And I looked to my right, stands right to our side, and sitting over there in all his glory was the Bojangles champion. Oh, God. Can you believe it? Stupid-ass Jay-Z and that spinning belt and his lovely new girlfriend. Did you meet the girlfriend? I waved at him. uh, Did not meet her. But I sent him a text. I said, I said, never buy a ticket. I said, I will always get you in. He didn't buy a ticket. I know he didn't. He said, I'm here on business. Bojangles sent me here. Yeah. How about that? Can you believe that's a sentence? (laughs) God bless Bojangles. I love Bojangles. Love their biscuits. And, uh, so, (laughs) so the Bojangles champion was there with his suit, holding his belt and it was, and, and sunglasses on, uh, so it was great. It was great seeing him again, even from afar. Yeah. From afar is the way to uh, befriend him. You know, he's trying to uh, get in on this hashtag Conrad needs a new friend business. And, uh, I think Cassio kid, once he put his application public, Cassio kid responded with a meme that says, I don't really see that happening. Yeah. Right. I would, I'd go for that. Cause anybody who's a member of a SWAT team, I'd love to be my friend. Well, I don't think, I think we're supposed to, uh, Kizib, Fizab, the Swizot team. Fizib. Okay. Fizib. Okay. Maybe he's not. Okay. I'm talking about swatting flies. I think you, uh, you, you look like a Fizat Nizart. You need to shiz out your Mizalf. <laughs> well, Fizak Yuzu. Well, you stupid Fizucking Mizart. Uh, but don't Fizak Mizi. Why are we doing this? <laughs> I feel strongly that saving money is important. You know, if it's not something we worry about now, boy, we are really going to worry about it later. And I want to help you get out of debt faster and do it with cheaper monthly payments. I'm talking to you. If you're in a 30 year loan, now is the time to take years off of your loan. We're routinely helping our listeners cut five, 10, even 15 years off their loan. And you can do this without perfect credit with no money out of pocket. You've just got to start at SaveWithConrad.com. Great. I got the kit. Let's go out and do a poolside at Gallo's house. Oh, so you're too good to let Gallo's tattoo you now? Yes. Oh, well, I'm going to send him a clip of this and he's going to put a big boot, you know, the dangle that's his name now. Yeah. The dangle. (laughs) He's got the dangling shits. You know about that. The dangling shits. Yeah. Mm. Doc dangling gallows. You don't know about Mm. this. Yes, I do know about it. That's how he was announced the other night. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but, he's uh, hearing and he's got his little spinny thing and his beard, like he likes it. And right. Right. I mean, I think you should let him t- have you seen his tattoos. A lot of those, he does himself. <sighs> He'll just get home, start drawing on his arm and shit. Uh, stop it. He had one time had a tattoo shop, which he no longer has. I understand. Is that correct? Yes. So if I want to get a tattoo, I'm going to go into a tattoo shop. And well, get he, it to done. Here's my question. Would you go with him? Oh to, yeah. To a shop, but yes, I would be painted gypsy <laughs> in Conyers, Georgia. Painted gypsy. That's the name of it. That was the, that was the name of his store, yeah, but it's no longer there. I don't believe so. <laughs> Not a lot of businesses that were opened by wrestlers make it. <laughs> I don't know that you knew that. I know there's a lot of businesses. Thanks to COVID. Uh, they didn't make it anyway. I don't think his was there uh, pre COVID. Okay. I believe so it, someone ripped him off yes. and stole his gear. I understand. So As now he, Kenny Omega went and gave them a knee strike to the head. <laughs> Why are we doing this? V trigger. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> or as you call everything, I saw this great clip of you on Botchamania just mispronouncing every move. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Canadian destroyer. And it was a death Valley driver. Oh, okay. And then you go death Valley driver. You know, listen guys, that move has a name. Okay. <laughs> that was- <laughs> hey, I'm learning. Okay. Oh God. I'm learning all this bullshit. At least I'm trying. No, listen, I loved it, man. I'm just so glad you're back. Such a great part of our wrestling fandom. And, you know, listen, there's been, there's all these like, uh, and they're hardworking people and they're wrestling fans, just like me and you, but there's a lot of like new announcers on, on a lot of the other stations. And you're like, who, who is this guy? And they're probably living their dream. Just like you are yours. But when I see you do the exact same thing they do, I just like it better when you do it. And y'all could say the same thing and wear the same thing. I just like it better when you do it because 
I, as a wrestling fan, know, like, and trust you. Yeah. Nostalgia. So when you introduce someone new into the mix, even if they're doing a fine job and they're doing the same thing and you know, it's really good. It's just not you. So we don't like it as much. And I feel like perhaps nobody has paid that price more than Michael Cole. If Michael Cole was the voice of another wrestling promotion in another day and time, I think people would probably appreciate him, but because he followed sheer Bros and mm. the WWE style has changed, people have decided Michael Cole sucks and that's probably that's, not fair. No, that's not fair because he doesn't No, And I don't know about these new, uh, announcers that you're talking about, but I'm sure that the WWE has run in a few new guys and. Have you seen Pat McAfee called WWE yet? Uh, No, I've not. You got to go out of your way to see it. You will love his style. Really? You know how it felt like when when Jesse Ventura came on the scene, like he had his own style and it was just different. Yeah. Well, Pat does it, but Pat is like me and you. He's a super fan. Have you watched, um, have you watched UFC before and really sat down and listened to Joe Rogan's commentary? No. Well, Joe Rogan is just an excitable fan. Now he happens to know a lot about mixed martial arts, specifically jujitsu. So, so he studies it and he's passionate about it and he loves it, but he is a fan first. Okay. And I think that's what you want in a color guy, somebody who can get you excited because enthusiasm is infectious. That's right. And, uh, man, Pat McAfee does a great job there. And I think you would like it. I mean, hell, he gets so excited about the stuff that a lot of the times he's standing up at the desk, watching the match. So he's calling the match, but standing up, it's very reminiscent. It's like a modern day David Crockett. Okay. You know, where maybe David, he he doesn't know all the, all the lyrics to the song, but boy, he's excited to be singing. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe that's, uh, does he do play by play? He's the color guy. Color guy. Okay. Uh, on what show? Smackdown. On Smackdown. Okay. He's in the Corey grave seat, if you will. All right. Well then I'll have to check it out. I think Corey does a great job. Oh, I've always liked Corey. I've always liked him. I just think, and I think, I think Corey and Michael Cole are a great team. I do. Uh, so. I think Corey, uh, gets lumped into that. Oh, he's with WWE. So it's not cool. You know, there's a whole lot of anti WWE fans online and I get it, but yeah, it's like, man, not everybody who works there is terrible. Not everything they do sucks. Like, no, no, you're right. You, you, you look, you find what you're looking for, you know? So like if you handed Lois your phone and just let her go through your phone, if she looked hard enough, she could find something to be mad about. Nah. But if she looked hard enough, she could find something to be happy about. You find what you're looking for. And we found Arn Anderson. Let's take it. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. So you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.